Welcome back, guys. The Main Stand Podcast, Season 2, Episode 34. Back at it again. We got Josh. We got Pat. Myself, Mitch. We had uh, a full week of UCL games. Uh, a pretty interesting weekend in the Prem we're going to tuck into. Boys, we're back at it again. We're back again. The run-in continues. Things are just starting to heat up. The bottom, middle, top of the table, UCL shaping up. Pat must be feeling real good. That's all I got to say. He's, uh, he's le- leveling I'm... up in both competitions. So, um, I'm excited. I like this time of the year when City are on for a potential treble, but we'll lose one of them. Maybe this weekend. We'll see. Do we want to touch on uh we'll touch on the prem first cuz uh, we'll go in chronological order here. Um nothing I feel like crazy happened. There was definitely some weird score lines. I think Villa beating Newcastle 3-0. Um Wolves beating Brentford was another weird one, but the the story of the weekend I think. We also had actually two crazy results, Brighton beating Chelsea and Bournemouth beating Tottenham. Uh the Bournemouth one especially at the last minute. But the it one is- everyone's talking about is West Ham Arsenal. Arsenal dropping yes. points again, killing a 2-0 lead again, putting City in the title race again. Is Brighton beating Chelsea actually that surprising, though? Like, honestly? Not, no, not surprising, but it's uh, to do it at the bridge, I think, is a little... We, uh, not, not surprising, but it's something worth, uh, I guess, shouting out Brighton for. First time they've yeah, won yeah, at the bridge, yeah. I think in a long I, time i agree with that I, I do think the result of the weekend was obviously yep. arsenal west ham now that gives city a little bit of an extra cushion in the run-in knowing that arsenal dropped another you know two points in the mix there um as a someone who like had a horse in the race but kind of expected arsenal to win this was a pretty shocking result uh when that second west ham goal went in uh, i was unbelievably surprised i don't really know how i gotta get jared bowens on having the greatest season but i don't get how you let a player of his known quality get that free of a volley uh for the equalizer there and then you know Saka missing the penalty kind of changed the whole dynamic of the game as well um impressive work by west ham to fight back from a quick two goals down and Credit to Arsenal on the second goal. That was a really good. That was a really nice goal. Their second goal was extremely yeah. well worked. I I thought the game was done. Oh yeah, that. I think that's the most like impressive thing spot. to come back from that first ten minutes because it was absolute domination. Like you said, Pat, that second goal was smooth. That nice little kind of like half volley. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought West Ham were going to get beat like five nil from how that first yep. ten minutes went. I I expected five or six after the second goal went in. Yeah, so for West Ham to come back, it is pretty crazy. They, I mean, they pulled off some weird results at the end of last year, too. I think beating Chelsea um, away. So this isn't unusual for, for them later in the year when they have, you know, chances to kind of get away from the relegation zone. Um, Arsenal, obviously, dropping points again is the story here, though. And it does feel I... like they're capitulating a little bit. The 2 nil lead, dropping two 2-0 two leads consecutively, I think, is a – is a problem yeah i think i think next week really is going to be the penultimate game for the title i do really think that if city beat arsenal they're going to carry that momentum to the end of the season i don't see city dropping many more points here and there maybe maybe an odd draw later in the season but arsenal have a pretty tough schedule uh i think arsenal are going to struggle going to newcastle again later in the year um I think they're going to struggle at the with their game against Chelsea as well. Chelsea are an awful team, but we know Chelsea love to play kind of party poopers for teams that are aspiring to win titles. We saw them kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> hand Leicester a title sure. in 15-16, beating Tottenham at the end of the season. Um, yeah, we've we've just seen seen this happen again, and I think everybody's kind of seen this. Uh, movie, so to speak. They've seen this episode with City three or four times. seasons in a row where a te- you know City looks at their schedule and says, oh, we've just got to win 16 in a row and we're champions. All right, bet. And they go and do it. Yeah, it's wild. And 
uh, Arsenal, uh, I think it'll be tough for Arsenal fans because they were riding that high for so long. They had a nice lead, too, at points, but individual performances, when those start cracking, um, I think Rob holding at the back, him having to play kind of a few games back there in a starting role. Um, yeah. And it comes down to individual moments, too, and that soccer penalty, as much as you don't want it to be because he's a young guy, obviously missed a big pen in the Euro final, too. Um, but usually I feel like big individual moments like that, if they don't go your way, especially at the end of the season, it's tough to uh, kind of come back from that, especially when you're playing West Ham, a team that right now, even though it's at a London Derby, you should absolutely be smacking up. So, yeah, at this think, point, yeah. It feels like we're starting to see the inexperience of this young Arsenal side kind of shine through. I think they're a super talented core, and they're only going to get better under Arteta, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're – right up there challenging again next year and and you know for what it's worth it's still in their hands they yep. still could go out beat yeah. city or, or just get a draw with city at the etihad and, and still win the title it's not like it's lost they just made it harder on themselves and that in and of itself is an accomplishment and yeah yeah they they kind of threw it away a little bit and, and made it really tough to see them winning a title they really did just give it to city they put it in city's hands but it's not totally lost and this arsenal side is still super talented and i'm excited to see what happens when their core maybe gets a couple of years and a couple other title races under their belt yeah for, for sure it'll it'll be interesting and uh when you look at kind of what that result does for west ham just to look at other parts of the table here it was an interesting week because Wolves, Bournemouth, and West Ham all got positive results, so it lifts them kind of further away from everyone, and then Leeds, Everton, Forest, Leicester, and Southampton all lose. All kind of stay in the same pack. They're all on the same amount of games. Has your guys' thoughts on the relegation battle changed at all here in the in the last week or so? I think Leicester might actually go down. That team is fucking horrible. Yeah, they looked real... They, they did play, I think, better against you at the end, but... uh. I don't know if that was a yeah, the you subs you made or... on it. The 45th minute. <laughs> yeah. That probably had something to do with it. Um, Leeds looked awful against us too, to be fair. Yeah, yeah no, that's they, true. They looked like a fucking block of Swiss cheese. Yeah, for how bad we've looked, and I know we've had some weird-ass score lines, like 9-0, 7-1, 2 7-1s, and a 7-0. 6-1. Six, a 6-1 six, instead of a 7-1, sorry. But regardless, we've had some weird score lines, and I know that we are still Liverpool at times, but I don't know. We are not playing that good to get a 6-1 win, and Leeds just were open up at Ellen Road, too, which I think was pretty embarrassing for them, given where they're at. I mean, with with the Leeds result, I, I haven't done the math with that six goals in there. Pre-Leeds match, we had scored 34% of our goals this season from United and uh, Bournemouth. And Bournemouth. Yeah. So, I mean, if if we're if we're relying on three games throughout the year to put in a third of our goals, it's not really a great thing to look at and be like, yeah, we've been consistent all year. But, uh, no, that Leeds game did feel. Pretty it does good, make Josh. it does make it nice to like look back on this year and it's like, yeah, we were shit, but we had like five really good games. <laughs> <laughs> makes you feel a little bit better at least it almost There's like a... it almost brings it up to like uh i don't know like not top four but like uh, uh you're challenging because i mean just like seven nil against united that's like when i look back at the season it's gonna be seven nil against united a nine nil a seven one a six one and that's how i'm gonna remember it uh and it's, if we don't it's... make your up it's still class <laughs> It's funny how the podium meme has gone from second place to, like, if we finish sixth, it's going to be the Liverpool fan on the sixth place part of that podium. It just keeps getting extended out. Um, yeah, pretty but much. But, no, against Leeds, we had a ton to be happy about as uh, as Liverpool fans. Uh, Josh, you want to you wanna fill us in on some of, the, some of the positives? I mean, there's a lot of positives to take away from that game. One, I mean, the, I don't know how good the Melier kid is in goal. I think I've said good things about him in the past, but I think he's given up a goal in, like, the last – like, out of the last 12 shots on target he's faced, he's conceded, like, 10. Some of the – especially the solo on the second goal, I thought he his positioning was just weird. But it was, it was a great game. Trent in midfield, I think, is the one everyone's talking about 
you know, from that one. I just thought he was class. Kind of shows the threat he can provide. Um, aside from that, it was nice to see, you know, Lucho get, get back on the field. Um, Nunez gets another class goal. Sala back in the mix. There's nothing really not to like. I really liked uh, Kanate's performance as well. Has a huge mistake, but didn't let that kind of phase him. Uh, you know, former teammates of his might not be able to do the same. And he <laughs> just had a class kind of uh, 90 minutes outside of that one mistake. So we walk yeah, away from that. that. Again, going to Ellen Road is not easy. Uh, and on to the next one. I, I have a question for you guys, and I, I kind of want Pat's opinion because he's not a Liverpool fan. Are we out of the top four race, Pat? I think so. You think so? Yeah, I don't see you guys making up the 12 points on anybody in the top four right now. I don't see Newcastle. Yeah, it's, it's Newcastle. It's nine or points. Nine, nine points? No, I'm it's bad at nine that. points. I don't, I don't see Newcastle dropping nine points sure. in the last eight games for it to be a, enough of a swing for you to get into top four. Top six is very much alive. Very much alive. I could see you in Europa, see you in Conference League competing with Mourinho's Roma, but <laughs> I don't think I could see you guys. I, I don't think you're getting the top four this year. I, uh, I just looked at Newcastle's remaining games. They have they have Chelsea twice. They have Brighton, Villa, and Leicester. We have. Uh, I was going to run through ours and too because Arsenal, Arsenal are in there too. Uh, and Arsenal, yes. Oh. And Southampton and Everton. And Tottenham. Everton and Everton at the end and Tottenham. You never know. <laughs> if you read through I, I ours, the, I have like a glimmer of hope of top four. And it, I'm not getting my hopes up, but there's like a glimmer there. We have Forest at home. That's three points in an ideal world. West Ham away. Tottenham at home, which were automatic three points. Fulham at home. Brentford at home. Leicester away. Villa at home. Southampton away. I bet that's one of the easiest remaining like eight games in the season, uh, like in the league. Yeah, I, I, I do, I do think it's tough though when you look at the teams and especially the Chelsea side, the way they've been playing. Newcastle's defense is so fucking good. I just, yeah. I don't, I don't know how it's possible to overlap them. I think, I think fifth is extremely reasonable to think. I'm 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 on the on the fourth place train, like fighting for fourth to stay in Europe. But the um, the smart brain in me is like, I mean, if we already can't afford Jude, it's not gonna happen. Let's take a year off and figure it the fuck out. Yeah, I'd, I'd almost rather stay out of Conference League contention than be in that shit tournament. <laughs> exactly, and and we saw how tough it was when Jurgen first came in the door, fighting through Europa League. It, it gave us a great boost and got us to to bag a, a few really key pieces but i don't know if right now is the right time to push for something like that especially when kind of everything is directing us toward a rebuild um you know i like what we've seen out of our side the last couple of weeks on the pitch um specifically from from trent you know he played he's played a great three halves of football uh, from a, a, a much different role. Kanate has had to play a more expanded role going going out wide and and so far so good. I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, but if this is the direction we're going, instead of bringing in a guy like Jude, maybe we look at Trent and Jude hanging out as Trent being, being um, you know, looking, looking to a friend, hey, how do I get back into the midfield? And if he's looking to a player like that and and working through this transition back into his original role, commit to it. Yeah. Drive it drive it home. Cause his lethality with spreading the ball is isn't gonna change. We saw that. His his grit and determination to get to a ball is not gonna change. And the only positive I see out of putting him in the position he played in against Leeds is now when he gets aggressive, there's an extra line of defense behind to cover. And that's really my takeaway from what I've seen so far. Yeah. I, I like the direction we're going in. I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's necessary to put pressure for, for a high, high finish where we're, where sure. we're at after this season. To add on your trend point too, it's a lot cheaper to buy a new right back than a new English midfielder. Bingo. So we'll see how that works. Um, let, let's shift it over to Europe. We t talked about the prem probably enough for today. 
Uh, I know you guys watched all the European games, so I'm going to let you guys kind of run ship with this. Um, would you want to start it off with yesterday's matches? We got Napoli, Milan, Chelsea, Madrid. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think the the one to really talk about is probably the shock result. I guess in air, shock in air quotes. Um, Milan over Napoli, a team that a lot of people are were really high on, myself included. Uh, you know, everybody on this podcast Almost, included yeah. felt like that the Napoli were one of the top top teams in Europe, and they would go really far in this competition, especially given the side of the bracket that they were on. And uh, AC Milan are kind of like their bogey team. It feels like you know. I, I think they took that 4-0 in the league and they said, yeah, we know how to beat these guys. And uh, it was a pretty similar game plan there. And as it was across the uh, the two legs, just a, a counterattacking clinic, really, really solid at the back. Tamori, really, really good for AC Milan on the night. Uh, in, in the second leg, Rafael Leao, what a fucking run for that goal, man. Uh, a lot of people want to say that assists don't really mean a ton in – in the modern game and it's kind of all about goals but like that uh, that the run from layout to make that goal happen was 95 percent of the work to secure ac milan the tie um so that's what i have to say about that but what a player layout is i actually can't say enough positive things about him he's he defends he, he runs his ass off he's unbelievable on the ball he's explosive he's dynamic he's dangerous on the counter he can kind of do everything across the front three i'm a huge fan of the kid um and then on the other end osiman gets kind of like a consolation goal but napoli just weren't really uh weren't really napoli uh garvishelia Camaradonna. Ka- 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 i'm gonna call Kameradonna. him Kameradonna, like josh does Kameradonna kind of tried to do everything himself for the first 25 minutes of the game and it didn't really work out at all uh he wasn't particularly impressive i think they really missed anguisa in there to yeah. kind of break up some of the AC Milan counters, but yeah, they were missing overall, the guy at the back too, uh, Kim May, J- Kim Min Jay. He's had a really yeah. solid season too. Mitch, any any other thoughts other than no, you you, t- you took my Zambo, my Zambo fire. I've been riding with Zambo since uh, Napoli embarrassed us. Uh, just I was I was super impressed with how he's played, and I think it it really showed when you put in a player like Ndombele and in the in the um in the in that position um it really it really showed zambo has been mm-hmm. really a, a rock for for napoli it's pretty funny that Giroud is still scoring like meaningful champions league goals in 2023 it's and getting like, murdered it's, it's, he was he he absorbed a few crunchers that game i'm like stop it he's he's elderly <laughs> this is it, it is stop it is a little bit weird if like some i think we both and we'll get to it maybe later um i think all of us kind of favor milan over inter maybe i just this might be one of the more shit teams to ever make a champions league final (laughs) they're really not that good man it's just watching them this year they're not good and then when you look at their starting lineup on paper there's like a handful manyan is a really good in goal i'll give it to him tamori's good in liao and the other guys i'm not super impressed by Tonali's kind of a baller. Yeah. He yeah, but he was a baller for me, and I don't know. I feel like he's kind of cooled it off. Maybe I haven't watched enough. Um, I don't know. Tonali's a baller. They got Lucas Hernandez. They've got that Algerian attack at Basser. The he was Benasser, going the first leg. Yeah. Brahim Diaz good. Diaz I guess isn't bad either. But they have Lucas Hernandez. Yeah, Brahim Diaz, who I thought was a fucking bust after he left City, has been playing really really well for them. I think they're sneaky good. I think they're sneaky good. Maybe yeah. They don't have. They don't have household names. I think that's where the misconception with this Milan team is. What the fuck are you household. talking about? Divock Origi, household legend. True, yeah. Origi, Origi tax in the Champions League. They might <laughs> they might win it all. And to, uh, like with the Inter Milan win as well, I, I know we're, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. That's going to be a class semifinal. I mean, both legs at the San Siro. I don't know how many times that's happened. Where they, I think they met in a final once, but... We'll have to fact check that. Yeah, we'll we'll come back at the we'll come back when we do the UCL semis preview. Yeah, yes, with that one. But that's going to be a really good tie. I'm excited to see a, a Milan Derby semifinal in a European Cup. Um, other other game that happened yesterday, Madrid Chelsea. That kind of feels like an open and shut case. <laughs> uh, Bowley got the predicted scoreline right. Just the wrong yep. team scored three goals. Um, 
Chelsea are a mess. Lampard's about to be our first managerial 007 of the season. Um, you know, when Mudrick is your leading assist man on the season with two assists, <laughs> you have some problems up front. Um, for what it's worth, Chelsea actually looks like they could get themselves back in the tie the first 25 minutes or so, 25, 30 minutes. They created some chances. They really went for it. And then Madrid scored that goal and just totally took the life out of them. Uh, also, Mark Kukurea is fucking terrible. He is the biggest waste of money I've ever seen. That guy sucks ass. Thank you for taking him from City. I like. I was probably when Pat and I were kind of <sighs> going back and forth. He was he was watching the the Napoli Milan game. I was watching Chelsea Madrid a little bit more than the other. And I I was being a little hard on Ingolo Conte. He took the the weak footed uh, volley uh, for that first chance. Pulled it wide. Should have put it on target but that kukurea sitter with a wide open net his first instinct is to take an extra touch and then stand there it is baffling that people aren't screaming shoot just shoot just put it on net uh unforgivable i i think i think chelsea shot themselves in the foot in the first 20 minutes after not bagging two goals mitch is disgusted I'm livid. He he can't defend. He's not physical. He's not very quick. He can't score. He can't assist. What the fuck can the guy do other than get his hair pulled? I uh, I think Chelsea like lost this game before it started too. Frank, I I don't think realized he was down to. Uh, he basically played seven people at the back. <laughs> Very interesting lineup selection. Uh, Playing Tuchel ball. I think yeah. I Did think we... he's won one game out of those last seventeen uh, in all yeah, competitions. Yeah. Did we fact check his statement after the first leg? Quote: I didn't think Real Madrid were that good. Did we <laughs> actually said that. He is such an idiot, man. He he's like a. I saw a tweet of him like talking to Ancelotti before the game, just saying like, "Oh, you should have saw my Derby team back a few years ago." Uh, he's just such a shit manager. He had one half good season at Derby where he beat Leeds like once, and it was a big tie, and uh, that has bought him two stints at Chelsea. <laughs> I th- I think he's a very much a case of brilliant players are not always good managers. Uh, I think he gives Gary Neville a run for his money. Oh, yeah, 100%. Gary Gary Neville, like, I think Gary knew uh, that he was shit and just got out of it while he can. Frank, like, hasn't realized he's shit yet, and he's just in a a wash cycle, basically, of losing games. Yep, no, I completely agree. Put him in the spin cycle. Next one, today's games, um, Inter-Benfica. That one looked like, I didn't watch this one, but it looked like quite a game, 3-3 three, three finish. It uh, didn't seem like a game until the 70th minute, really, uh, and Benfica just had to go a man down and have the uh, the last-second pressure put on him to really make it a game. Uh, Inter, through both legs, seemed pretty clear to be the better team. I think it, it was a little bit shocking that Benfica didn't show a little bit more. Um, personally, I thought I thought Benfica would, would give this Inter team a run for their money, but I was wrong. This one really yeah, sucks. That, Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I was just going to say I was surprised that Benfica played as poorly as they did. Um, just couldn't finish in the first leg and were a little flat. And then in the second leg, it took them – two inter goals in like 80 minutes to wake up really yeah i think i agree with you too pat we've been uh hearing the benfica hype all year and uh, i think the smart play is always betting against portuguese teams beyond the round of 16 because they usually don't make it beyond that they're an awful form in the league too their yeah. their lead over porto has been cut to like i think it's five or six points Yep. In the Liga Portuguesa, they've lost a few on the slide. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising. It, we just don't follow the league as, sure. as heavily. I, I thought they were going to make a good tie out of it. I really wanted to see Benfica Napoli in the semis, but we're getting a um, Milan derby on one side, and I'm not going to complain. Yeah, it, this is a tough look for me too because I've, I think, said 10 times on this podcast this year that the both Milan teams are shit, 
<laughs> yep, at least. I, I've rode Roma hard. I've rode, obviously, Napoli. I, I've tried to ride every single Italian team but these Milan teams, and, of course, they're <laughs> the ones who make the Champions yep. League. And one of them is going to be in a Champions League final. Uh, and then on the other side of the bracket, the other semifinal, um, well, I guess the other quarterfinal to make the other semifinal, um, I was right. City beat Bayern, and it was convincing, and I'm happy about it. Not even a game, not even a contest. Uh, they were, it was Bayern went for it in the in this game. They they really did. They put a lot of pressure on us. Um, but you know when Ederson is making saves in a big game, you're destined to win, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> Ederson actually used his hands tonight. Are, are you uh, Ederson out, Pat? You've been pretty n- negative on Ederson the past few weeks. I just think he's a shit keeper with his hands. I don't think there's a better keeper for our system because he's so good with the ball at his feet. But, like, I think he forgets that you can save the ball with your hands sometimes, and that's all I'm going to say about the guy. I love him, though. He's a fucking yeah. madman, and I wouldn't have any other keeper in the world for what he brings to the team. But he's not a very good shot stopper. Do you um, think the, um, the 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 Bayern attackers and, and goal threats – were playing in that into that a little bit more because they I I personally don't think Bayern made Ederson work enough uh, with the shots that we were taking like for instance that Kingsley Coman uh, moment with the the hocus pocus in the box he finds himself wide open and he just rifles it right at Ederson. Well, um, he's a funny angle, and then the triple moting yeah. back heel I agree with. Yeah, and a lot of the Sane long shots probably weren't very good, but. I mean, in the first leg, he made that huge save yeah. uh, against Sonny when it was still 1-0. Um, I also think a lot of Bayern's poor shot creation was down to the fact that the city defense is, like, very good with Ruben yeah. Diaz back in the side. John Stones has been immense in this, like, hybrid center-back defensive mid-roll. Rodri was a little shaky today, I will say that. You know, when you really pressure the guy i think he had a little trouble and nathan ake could not keep up with coman's pace uh, actually went off with a pulled hamstring in like the 70th minute um so that was a little unnerving to see but hopefully he's all good uh, the only other thing i'll say about the game is unbelievable goal by holland you're not a real city striker uh if you don't miss a couple pens though so perfectly <laughs> fine with the miss i don't think that was a pen and i don't think byron's penalty was a pen either so I, I, for me, I don't think either of them are, are handballs. You can't really do anything about either situation. Um, yeah, pops up I, off the ground and hits your extended arm on the byline. Like that's not a handball. And I, I mean, if Trent if, the bottom of your fucking elbow is not a handball either. I'm sorry. I don't care that the arm was extended. It, like, yeah, it didn't change the flight of the ball. Yeah. It was still going the same place. It clipped the bottom of his elbow. That's not a handball. If if Trent's if Trent's uh, contact with the ball isn't a handball, I agree with Pat. I don't think either of those are. I think it's just an incident of of the play. And I am happy really that go there was consistency though. There was yeah. consistency in the handball calls. I don't think either of them were handballs, but I like that the referee was consistent. If yep. clipping the bottom of your elbow is a handball, then inadvertently getting it bounced off the ground into your extended arm is also a handball. Yeah, that's the least you can ask. Can you move on. Inclined to concur. Bring me Madrid. Bring me Madrid. Yeah, get, let's get <laughs> instant reaction to playing Madrid again, Pat. Bring me Madrid. I am ready. Uh, this city team is different. I feel fucking invincible with Erling Haaland leading the line. Bring me Madrid. You heard it here first, guys. Uh, so Pat's Sterling predicting. To... <laughs> Raheem <laughs> Sterling isn't here to miss one on one. <laughs> It's fucking Holland now. Is is this the most confident you've ever been about winning the Champions League, Pat? Knowing who's really on the other side. The Chelsea beat us. I'm gonna be honest. I would, was really confident the year we lost to Chelsea. So I don't know. You have to feel it's like if you beat Madrid. if you beat Madrid, you have to feel like one hand is if, approaching the trophy. If we beat Madrid, I will maybe say we might win it. Maybe so. Okay. I'm not saying okay. the words though. Okay. I refuse to say the words. But what did you what did you what did you tell me though? It could be the year. It could be. This could be the year. I it could finally happen. But but why? Because the last time Scott Carson won the Champions League was in 2005 in Istanbul against AC Milan. So AC Milan are going to win on the other side, and then we're going to beat Real Madrid. We're going to meet AC Milan in Istanbul 18 years later and win Scott Carson his second Champions League, making him the best goalkeeper to ever play for City and Liverpool. 
But you also have Divock Origi playing on the other side in Istanbul against Man City. But he didn't win it in Istanbul already. No, there's Stockholm. Liverpool lore there. I, I don't know. I think you have Liverpool magic working on both sides. We, but we have the aura of Scott Carson. We have the vibes. That's why I'm more confident in us. Veteran vibes. No, the, just the actual vibes. He's oh, like a, okay, gotcha. a 50 year old grandfather. I think that wraps it up pretty much for the UCL boys. I had one out of bounds topic real quick. This is just a minute. So, um, there, have you guys heard of the new UK rapper D Day? Yes. You no. have. Have you heard the I've story heard, about him, Mitch? I have not heard the story. So uh, I, this is fresh. Okay, okay. This is good. This is really good. The, so UK rapper D-Day claims to actually be a Premier League footballer who keeps his identity secret by wearing a mask. This is what he looks like. You can find this on Men in Blazers, by the way. And he raps a verse and drops quite a bit of football bars. Um, but I just want to go around and get predictions on who you think it is, if it is a Premier Leaguer. I don't know what he sounds like, so I can't I'm, I can't give a, a prediction. Can we get no way this guy's not as famous we can absolutely get dmca'd can we we yeah, I'm definitely just gonna, fucking can just, we do not I'm have just, permission to play this I'm, guy's music i'm just going to i'm just going to uh mute my mic here for a second <laughs> are we are we actually oh mitch is playing it I'm going to check him out, too. I'm going to mute up real okay. quick. Shout out our I podcast heard, fans who just sat through I that. just... So, sorry. Uh, wow. A lot of people are saying a Wobie, maybe. It it does have a Wobie vibes. It, it, it... I don't know. That could... That could <laughs> it's that could it's be a Ivan very Tony. interesting one. That could be Ivan Tony. That could Ivan, be Tony, Ivan Tony. That's not a bad shout. That's not a bad shout. I was thinking it might be someone more... I don't know. I, I was going through the the are list of players. Are we thinking it's somebody bigger, or is it is is it like a rotational player? He drops a some. Rotation? He drops a line where it's like someone. It's not like a young star like Foden. So I'm thinking he's young. Bakayo Saka, maybe. I don't think, I think that's Saka. That doesn't sound like Saka. No. Did you listen to it too, Pat? I did. I think okay. his voice is a little too deep to be Saka. Um, Dominic Calvert Lewin. I, I just hope he doesn't ever reveal his identity and he's just a mask rapper for the rest of his existence. Oh, you those people always get found out of it. I guess I say that. I don't know if anyone's ever found out who Marshmallow really is. If you just if you're good enough good about point. it. Yeah, there are, there are people that definitely do know uh that shouldn't know. Yeah. But they're but I I, I don't know. That's a fucking crazy rumor mill. It's, it's a great out of bounds topic too. Great That's to get the predictions from the lads. Not, now I'm going to be losing sleep over this, Josh. I'm going to be doing re- research on D Day. Well, he drops multiple uh, bars, so he like drops a Foden bar, a uh, Harry Kane bar. So he's, you have to think like, I don't know. You wouldn't be a rival of one of those teams, you would think, because that'd be kind of weird if you're a rival spitting bars about like other guys at like your neighborhood club. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a mind pretzel about it. I'm gonna lose sleep over it. What if he isn't actually? The, this a... is a very real possibility too. <laughs> it's like those videos um, uh, Beta Squad does in England with yeah, chunks. Yeah, I was just about to... of like <laughs> who's a footballer. <laughs> the one Trent was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, "Ain't no way." <laughs> no. There was way. a there was one of like uh, there was a rap one with Stormzy. It was the same thing. So yep. I think they need to they need to vet this guy. Yeah, we'll get D Day on on <laughs> on with the beta squad. Great topic to end the podcast today, boys. Uh, do we have anything else, Pat? You you must be really excited. You're going to England in a couple weeks, brother. Two weeks exactly from day of recording. Um, I wanted Chelsea to win that Champions League tie, so no matter what, I could have gone to a UCL semifinal while I was over there. Not gonna happen. Um, but I'm really excited. I will hopefully be gathering some content for. The fellas, uh, catch me live at the Etihad. I'm going to try to do some stadium tours. I uh, didn't realize you could only schedule them on certain days. Um, <laughs> my dumb ass didn't even clock. They, like, don't do tours around the time of match days. So 
you know, there's that. Uh, but gonna gonna see what I can do. Gonna try to at least get some some fun content from Empty Head Stadium. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm excited. You guys won't get you won't get to hear my beautiful voice for like two episodes though, so that's unfortunate. The link up with England is gonna be real. Pat's gonna have a good time. Get some content out for the folks. So I'll do what I can. Friday night counterattack, boys. If you're listening to this, I'll be in London. So let me know. <laughs> I think they're from Manchester too, aren't they? Uh, I think one of them is. One of them is, not yeah. Take it. You, you guys hit, hit me up. Hit us up in the DMs, and uh, we'll see if we can work something out. Heard it here. Main stand, episode 34. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the podcast. As always, we're, we're in the run-in. We're in the thick of it. Thanks for we'll tuning in. Week. Deuces. <laughs>